speak together the psalm. With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Reading from Genesis chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. 
Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days... The waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth and Noah's wife, And three wives of his sons with them entered the ark, they and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female, of all flesh went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the, under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things, and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 3. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, in a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to you this for to for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit." in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. 
A reading from Luke chapter 11. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him, so he went in and reclined at table. The Pharisee was astonished to see he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give as alms those things that are within, and behold, everything is clean for you. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues and, and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without knowing it. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The texts for this evening are the epistle lesson, the second reading, and also the gospel lesson, the third reading, which was previously read. One of the things that I like to say sometimes, I like to ask this question, especially of children, but I even do it with adults. I like to ask the question, are you smiling on the inside? Sometimes we might be happy on the inside, but our face might not show it. And so we ask, and so I ask that question. The opposite can also be true. Sometimes we can put a facade on and show happiness, but not be really and truly happy on the inside. There is something more profound, though, that we see in our gospel lesson about what can happen on the outside and what can happen on the inside. You see, Jesus was invited to dine, and there were Pharisees there, and when Jesus sat down to dine, he did not wash his hands. And the Pharisees were astonished at this. How is it that Jesus could be so unclean? And maybe we can empathize a little bit in our current circumstance. But Jesus accuses the Pharisees He accuses them of being clean on the outside, of putting a show on the outside, but truly on the inside, they are unclean. They do not pay attention to God's love and justice. They pay only attention to the outside things that people see. In the end, this means that they are truly unclean. When the outside is clean and the inside is not, You are not clean. I think often you and I also can hide things in our lives. On the outside, it looks really good. On the outside, it looks clean. On the outside, it looks righteous. But on the inside, there are things that are hidden, things that are in the closet, a skeleton in the closet, and you keep them hidden. But we do have consciences. And our consciences are given to us by God. The Lord has told us that he has written his law on our hearts. And that is our conscience. And so we know the truth. 
and we compare the truth with what we are trying to hide, we ultimately know and realize that what we are doing and saying is evil and wrong. Romans 2, 14 through 16. For when Gentiles, who do not have the law, by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. On that day when, according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. There is a truth here. We might be able to hide from one another. We might be able to hide from our community, but we cannot hide from God. God sees all, and he makes his judgments. David, a king of Israel, recorded in the Old Testament, sinned. He sinned by committing adultery with Bathsheba, and he murdered, and he lied, and he cheated. And God sent to him a prophet named Nathan, who was able to show David his sin. And he says it, I have sinned. And Nathan the prophet says to David, you will not die because of your sin. It is revealed, it is shown, it is discovered, the sin that David committed. And because of this, David writes Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Wash me thoroughly. Cleanse me from my sin. This is what David needed, and he is showing it. And this is also what you and I need. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. And that is what David experienced. The Lord came and taught him, taught him in his inward being, taught him wisdom in his secret heart, and showed him the truth of his life. David goes on, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cleanse my inward being. Give me peace. This is, in fact, the purpose of our baptisms that we have received in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is a cleansing of our lives. It is a cleansing that you have received that was done once but is good every day of your life. And you are cleansed from your sins. You are given peace. You're given peace where there was none. You are given cleanliness on your inside. 1 Peter 3, 20 through 20. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, not as a removal of dirt from the outside, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is your baptism. It is what you have today. And the Lord Jesus has come, and he has given you that cleansing. He has created you in you a clean heart. He has washed you. And what he has done inside of you 
is even greater than your sin. Would you please open your hymnals to page 325? We will, I will speak the questions for the sacrament of holy baptism. You please respond with the answers. First, what is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. Which is that word of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Second, what benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Third, how can water do such great things? Certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a life-giving water, rich in grace and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. As St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Fourth, what does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live for God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing the canticle.
temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you are the one who is in charge of all things. And we acknowledge that and we trust you even in this day in which we are experiencing a sickness in our land. Lord, we do pray and ask that you would take this sickness away and that you would preserve all of us and you would especially give healing to those who are afflicted. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Merciful Lord, Cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 